Are you ready? Sorry. show about all things digital advertising. I'm your host, Dan Pratt. And I'm Todd Saunders. And today, we're going to change things up a bit. Instead of giving you some digital advertising insights, we're going to answer one of the most frequently asked questions that we get as startup founders. How did you raise money for your startup? So we're going to talk about the four things you need to know when you're raising money for your startup. Tip number one, ask for advice. Now, this is going to sound kind of basic, but in my opinion, one of the most important things you can do when you start to raise money for your startup is ask advice as much as possible. There's a very common saying in Silicon Valley where if you uh, ask for money, you get advice, and if you ask for advice, you often get money, and there's a lot of truth behind that. When Todd and I first started Ad Hoc, one of the very first things that we did was we tried to contact as many investors, either angel investors or institutional investors, um, and the goal for us was just to meet them, ask them questions, understand the questions they would ask us. And what it did was it helped us build a lot of meaningful relationships before we ever went and started to raise a dime of money. Yeah, it allows you to kind of soft sell yourself without going there and saying, this is who I am. Um, by you going there asking thoughtful questions, really um, asking them questions about themselves, they get to learn more about you kind of in a, in a backwards way. Um, so definitely meet as many people as possible. I think that leads us into probably tip number two, where um, once you meet all these people, Ideally, you add them to an investor or a mentor update email. Um, reason being, you know, when we were in Techstars, we had no money, uh, we were broke, and we knew we had to raise money after Techstars. And some of the advice we got is that a lot of people show up to Techstars Demo Day and they say, okay, I'm here, uh, I did Demo Day, where's my money? Um, but the real problem with that is investors didn't get to see your updates or where you were at week two, week four, week six, week eight as founders and as a company. Um, and then they can say, wow, look how fast they've grown over eight weeks without money. Um, imagine if I gave them money. So when you meet with all of these people and ask them for advice in tip number one, make sure you ask them, hey, can I add you to my mentor update or my investor update? Uh, that way, when you're finally ready to raise money, um, they've heard from you a bunch of times, they've seen your personal growth and the company's growth. Yeah, I think the funny thing about that, like personally for Ad Hoc was, at a certain point, you sometimes, you know, you lose track of all the people that you've talked to and you've added to the email update. So every now and then you get emails from, you know, various investors or angels that you talked to in the past that pop in and give you really good pieces of advice. Um, and sometimes that can be taken to the extreme. We raised a $2.5 million round uh, in October of last year uh, from a, a investor called Founder Collective. Um, and the whole reason that round happened was because they were added to our email updates all the way back when we did Techstars three years ago. And they got to see the progress that we had made over a two year period. So for them, getting those constant updates from us and seeing the growth that we were sort of developing not only as a company, but to Todd's point as individuals, got them really excited about the further mission that we were on. And I think that's a good segue to tip number three, which is pick one founder uh, that is in charge of all of the fundraising. Um, it's very difficult for the founders or even the investors to keep track of like who's who, um, when's the last time I spoke to that person, you might speak to 20, 30, maybe 100 investors, and if you have too many cooks in the kitchen, too many hands kind of working on it, um, it won't be a fluid process. It would be no different than if you were a sales team and you had a different sales executive talk to the same lead over and over again. Uh, there's kind of no rapport. Uh, so when we were Techstars, I handled most of it. There was definitely a couple of investors that Dan met first that it made sense for Dan to kind of continue the conversation and transition to me at some point. Um, but now that we're 50 people and the business is in a different stage than it was in Techstars, um, you know, I'm solely re responsible for the fundraising um, efforts for us. Yeah, I think a big part of that too is just like limitations of time. When you're first starting a business, like every minute of your time is so incredibly valuable and there were really important things that we had to sort of divide and conquer on and fundraising was certainly one of them. Um, like Todd said, there's always those rare occasions where, you know, an investor's gonna write you a million dollar check, they're gonna wanna meet the founding team and get to know, you know, any person on the cap table as well as possible. Um, so you will have some sort of interaction with them over time, but just to be really respectful of your individual time and the time it takes to scale a company in the right way, it's good to divide, conquer, and move forward. Ooh, tip number four. Uh, 
And you know, that really segues us into the final tip here. Just because you just raised a brand new two, four, six million dollar round, doesn't mean you have to just go out and spend it all. If you look at kind of our trajectory, we raised you know, 1.5, then we raised another 2.5. Um, and just because we raised the money, we didn't go out and say, wow, we have to go spend this in 18 months, let's go get a big office and you know, all these other things that um, seem like in movies and TV shows you kind of have to do after you raise money. Now your investors might be saying, yeah, we want you to be a big business in 18 months. But really what they're saying is take this money, add it to your war chest, and at some point come back to us with a massive return. That doesn't have to be in six, 12, 18 months. Uh, so just know that when you raise money, you're adding that to a war chest. You can use that war chest to grow slowly, profitably, and then grow as quickly as you want at the rate you want. Uh, but you don't just have to get it and spend it all right away because you don't know what's gonna happen six, 12, 18 months down the road, where you're gonna wanna pivot, where you wanna zig, where you're gonna wanna zag. Um, so yeah, keep it in the war chest as long as possible and, and grow at the rate you need to grow to build a big business. Yeah, I saw on Twitter, I forget who this was, so sorry for not giving this person credit, but uh, they said, the end of a fundraising round is the perfect time to institute austerity measures for your business and nothing could be further from the truth. What trip. is austerity? Austerity means like you wanna, you wanna budget, right? Don't, don't spend the money as quickly as possible and you wanna start to like be very thoughtful about how you spend it. You wanna be capital efficient. To recap, here are the four things you need to know before raising money for your startup. Tip number one, ask for advice. Tip number two, add all the investors that you talk to to regular email updates. Tip number three, pick one founder to handle all of the communication with your investors. And tip number four, build a war chest. Build a war chest. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of Hawk Talks. If you have any questions about fundraising or what it takes to raise money for your startup, drop us a line in the comments below. We'll cover it on another episode. I'm your host, Dan Pratt. And I'm Todd Saunders.